Andrew, thank you very much for joining us there from London. Uh, it has been a tough few years for Glaxo. You've been through restructuring. You've had some falling sales. Uh, has the company turned a corner? Are things going to improve or should investors still expect a tough road for the next couple of years? Well, thanks very much, Shannon, for the opportunity. I, I think we're at an inflection point here at GSK. Uh, firstly and most importantly, the headwinds, the, the genericization of products like Valtrex, the loss of Avandia, and the absence of the pandemic flu products from last year. Those headwinds are really dropping away quickly now as we go forward. And what you'll have seen in quarter two is we delivered 5% underlying sales growth, reported sales down 2%, but if you adjust for those three factors, 5% underlying, that makes six straight quarters where we've averaged 4.5% underlying sales growth. So it's pretty clear what the underlying continuing business is capable of doing. Uh, as we move forward now, we expect those headwinds to drop pretty quickly uh, over the rest of this year. We expect to be back into reported sales growth territory in 2012. We think we can start to then expand our operating margin. And also, we've been delighted this quarter again to increase our dividend by a further 7% 7, uh, 7 uh, to 16 pence a share. So we're delivering a dividend increase. We've bought back a billion pounds of stock already this year. We plan to do up to another billion in the rest of the year. So shareholders are receiving significant uh, returns and uh -huh. we're moving very close to getting back to growth. And Andrew, uh, you've done a lot of restructuring in R&D to get more pipelines to market. Now, you and every drug maker have been facing a drought of new products. What's your prescription for how big pharma needs to become innovative again? Well, number one, you need to re repersonalize discovery. The industry in the 90s really lost its way in terms of over-industrializing the creative side of drug discovery. We, we changed that four or five years ago. We went to a completely different way of operating, much lower scale. That's the first thing. Secondly, we do 50% of our discovery externally. What that means, we have huge numbers of biotech partners. We don't know where the next good idea is going to come from, so we're going to partner with people to find it. And thirdly, we need to develop the drugs which are going to then not just deliver great clinical value to patients, but also economic value for payers. And if you look at GSK today, we have 15 drugs which are going to report out in 30 different clinical trials over the next 18 months. Those drugs are in everything from HIV to diabetes, uh, respiratory cancer. It's these sorts of drugs and vaccines which have the potential to really create value, not just for patients, but also for payers. And we have to get that right. Otherwise, people are just not going to buy the output of the industry. And Andrew, you mentioned partnerships. Uh, you've watched a lot of your competitors get bigger through acquisitions, do some big deals. You've sat on the sidelines while this has been going on. Why is that the best strategy, to not do big deals, to focus on these smaller partnerships? Well, we've had a very strong view, Shannon, that uh, first of all, we were as big as we need to be. Uh, we didn't need more infrastructure. If anything, we needed less infrastructure. We wanted to make the problem of this industry wasn't to get bigger. It was to do the things properly and to get what we do right. So we focused on really fundamental organic change, better R&D, better discovery, leaner manufacturing organizations, focus on quality and compliance, and a commercial organization which is fit for the current customer, not the customer of the 1980s. I actually think much better to stay focused on that, avoid the distraction of a big transaction, and also, I'm absolutely guided by my belief that major M&A more, more often than not destroys shareholder value over the long run than creates it. And we're very happy with the progress we've made organically. And Andrew, we only have a few seconds here. One or two areas that people should expect you to do a deal in? Uh, we, we are doing very few deals. We do very small bolt-on deals. Where we do them, it's in emerging markets. Uh, and it's in the consumer space. That's where typically you'll see us do deals. But we've done very few over the last few months as we've seen valuations go a little nuts. We'd rather give the money back to shareholders through dividend increase and share buyback. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that insight.